In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Among the thousand reasons that should move us to desire earnestly and to seriously labor to reach sanctity is that the saints are filled with great joy, even in this life. <clears throat> even the common people have always understood this. And that is why, if someone was habitually gloomy, they granted that he might be disciplined, austere, or severe against his body. But to be sure, he could not be a saint. <clears throat> Now, this sort of, of popular instinct, instinct is supported by theology, since among the fruits of the Holy Ghost, St. Paul does mention joy first. It is also confirmed by the lives of the saints. For if we read their lives throughout the year, it is easy to see that despite the most marked differences of character and states, a common characteristic is seen throughout, namely that all the saints enjoyed great peace and joy from the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> Even though the saints were so modest and unaffected, they could not succeed in hiding their deep spiritual joy. When people met a Saint Teresa of Avila, a Saint Francis Cabrini, a Saint Philip Neri, or a Saint John Bosco, they clearly perceived that they possessed the most profound joy. And this is one of the reasons why people were attracted to them, wanted to imitate their way of life, so that they also could obtain a similar spiritual joy and peace. <clears throat> what then was the secret that allowed the saints to have this joy, when many others, most, succumbed to sorrow and to disquiet? What is the secret? The secret is no other than the cross. The cross. We do not accept the crosses God's providence sends us. We try to escape our daily crosses. We shun them in a blind and foolish attempt to be happy in that way. <clears throat> but although we try to escape the crosses that God sends us, we of course cannot and do not succeed. As a matter of fact, of fact, we ordinarily end up suffering not only the first cross we were trying to escape, but also we bring upon us bigger and heavier crosses. We try to live without crosses, but due to sin, that is simply not possible. The options in this life are reduced ultimately to these two. Either we willingly accept the crosses providence sends, sends to us for the love of God, and in doing so, the cross becomes the source of peace and joy, or <clears throat> if we, res we refuse to embrace the cross, which is then still put upon our shoulders, but becomes more difficult to carry, since instead of being made lighter, at least by spiritual joy, it is made twice as heavy by sadness and lack of resignation. <clears throat> the sweet joy of the Holy Ghost is experienced only by those who embrace their daily cross for the love of Christ. If we do not enjoy the consolation of the Holy Ghost, His peace and His ineffable joy as the saints did, it is precisely because we flee the small crosses he sends us daily. <clears throat> we seek, as I said, for the chimerical joy of not having crosses. And this we cannot obtain, simply because it is impossible in this life. Nor do we experience the joy of the Holy Ghost, 
which is not granted to those who flee the cross. And so we end up empty-handed. We don't have, of course, the false and impossible joy of lacking crosses, nor do we have the true and attainable joy of the Holy Ghost, which is the joy of crosses well carried for the love of God. It was of this joy that St. Paul wrote to the Corinthians, I am filled with comfort. I exceedingly abound with joy in all our tribulation. And today the Apostle praises the Thessalonians because they had become followers of him, quote, <clears throat> receiving the word, that is the gospel, in much tribulation with the joy of the Holy Ghost. Notice how St. Paul joins tribulation with the joy of the Holy Ghost. It is as if he said, you have become like unto me in carrying crosses for the love of God. And this fills you like it does me with the joy of the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> when we contemplate the ineffable peace and joy with which the Holy Ghost fills the hearts of the saints, even in this life, we rightly sigh for it. For Christ wishes to fill our hearts also with the sweet joy of the Holy Ghost. And he will indeed do so, if only we accept the crosses he sends us, the embracing of which is the only way to peace and joy. There is simply no other. As the imitation of Christ says, Why then art thou afraid to take up thy cross, which leads to a kingdom? In the cross is salvation. In the cross is life. In the cross is infusion of heavenly sweetness. In the cross is joy of spirit. <clears throat> Let us then make an effort to cease fleeing from the cross and to accept it for the love of Christ. If we do so, and only if we do so, we will experience that consolation, that peace, that joy of the Holy Ghost of which St. Paul speaks. Then we will realize, as the saints did, that the crosses our Lord sends us, though painful to nature, are the cause of the greatest blessings, not only, not only in the next life, but already in this one. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. <laughs>